Hey, so because a particular person has been bugging me for months on Discord to make this, uh, here we are. I hope you're happy, Emma. <laughs> Today, we're going to talk all about that weird tentacle fetish of yours and how to play this makeshift Cthulhu looking ass borderline hentai frame. If you also would like to suggest a video to torture me with and wait for it for months on end, feel free to become part of our Discord server. Yes, our Discord server. Also, if you haven't read my latest community post, I'm giving away three awesome prizes if we reach 3,000 subscribers by the end of September, including a one-time only merch shirt, 1000 platinum and a loki prime set all you have to do is subscribe to this channel follow me on twitch and make sure you're in the discord to participate radio let's get into it hydroid was released in 2014 following Sephir as one of the warframes that was not in the first release of the game and the first warframe with in my eyes a very unique style do you not fear death i'll take my chances sir to the dead Inspired by pirates and monsters of deep, Hydroid is lord of the water, summoning it and using it to his advantage in every encounter. Though his skill set is definitely outdated and could use some polishing, let's take a look at all of his abilities, discuss what they do and then head over to how I think you should play Hydroid. Let's start off with his passive. Slam attacks have a 50% chance to summon a tentacle for 15 seconds. A total of 3 tentacles can be spawned which detect enemies close by and deal true damage, ignoring enemy shields and armor. We won't come back to this passive since it's pretty much useless and yeah. Ability number 1. Tempest Barrage. Hydroid summons a barrage of angry rain that explodes upon impact with a solid surface. This is a targeted area of effect ability, meaning you can place it wherever you want, and only that area will be swarmed with rain droplets of death. There's a couple of mention-worthy things about this ability, namely that it's mostly used to knock enemies on their ass, and it's Hydroid Subsume ability. You can either quick cast it or hold it for a few seconds to gain 200% damage per explosion and increase duration for a higher energy cost. The Corroding Barrage Augment adds a corrosive status effect to enemies when hit by the barrage and can be obtained from Suda or New Loka. Ability number 2, Tidal Surge. Hydra transforms himself into a mini tsunami, crashing through enemies. This again is a form of soft CC with some added but very questionable mobility. Like Lavos, before they added the drifting part, you pretty much rush from A to B in a straight line. The damage it deals is negligible or almost even non-existent, but it is a fun way to throw enemies and yourself off the map. It's mostly used to group up enemies and slap them in the face with your big stick. The augment title impunity clears status effects and grants 12 seconds of proc immunity for yourself and allies you touch with your steamy water. Nice. Wow, 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 is it very nice? Ability number three, Undertow. Now Undertow has a lot of interesting quote unquote synergies or rather quirks. But first and foremost, Hydroid turns himself into a puddle of water, sucking in all enemies who dare to come in contact with it, leaving them moister than your mama's underwear whenever you've been a good boy. Now here's some interesting quirks. When quick casting Undertow on and off, enemies are susceptible to ground finishes because they get knocked down. However, this doesn't always work and especially it doesn't work at all when you proc enemies with say a fire status first, meaning it's unreliable and therefore I wouldn't recommend using it. Next, while in Undertow you only get to travel 50% of your second ability's range, but you gain 200% damage bonus on your fourth ability. <laughs> Tentacle Swarm. You are also able to cast Tempest Barrage while in Undertow and while in Undertow and left clicking at an enemy, you can drag them in with the tentacle. Your allies are also able to shoot and use abilities from your puddle of mud but it only deals 50% of the output damage to them. Now again, the damage here is underwhelming but you are completely invulnerable while in Undertow and the damage over time due to enemies drowning does stack up quite a bit. 
The augment allows allies to regain 30% of their health per one and a half seconds, with each ally in the pool increasing energy drain. It's also noteworthy that energy leeches continue to draw energy from you, increasing your energy drain significantly. Stay the fuck away from them. Last but not least, Tentacle Daddy's Hentai Harem, Tentacle Swarm. Hydroid summons the reincarnation of Cthulhu, who then forces tentacles up your enemy's ass like some form of twisted alien. Now there's a lot to this ability, but I'll keep it simple for you. The ability works the same way as Tempest Brush, as in you can tap it for quick casts or hold it to increase its radius and the amount of tentacles spawned. Now I know what you're thinking, but Swag, what about the damage? Does it do big PP damage or not? Well, sorry to burst your bubble, but no. Though the damage dealt to enemies caught is magnetic, and after that true damage, the abilities Hydroid has don't really scream DPS frame. And that's perfectly fine, because Hydroid really almost only is used for his fourth ability and some lazy farming slash CC frame play. It's worth noting that you can still move while casting this ability, so don't just stand around there like some idiot who lost his packet of Reese's Cups, move around so you can dodge incoming damage. Now the ability itself catches enemies with some tentacles, flash them around the map, making it harder to shoot them, so use an AoE weapon to kill them, please. The Augment Pilfering Swarm is almost the only Augment ever used on Hydroid, because enemies who have been killed after they come in touch with tentacles have a 100% chance at additional drops. Therefore, Hydroid can be classified as a farming and CC frame, and I gotta admit he's pretty good at it. Now, of course, as mentioned before, his kit is outdated and he could definitely use some love, but Hydroid isn't nearly as useless as many people would like to portray him as. With multiple forms of CC, his self-sustainability and invincibility moments, you can definitely clear some high-level gameplay, if you're willing to learn how to play Hydroid. But before I'm gonna talk on how we actually play Hydroid, let's just look at three builds I made for beginners, mid-game, and late-game slash steel path content. Starting off with the beginner build, this build focuses on survivability while making sure all your abilities are enhanced in one way or another. This truly is the beginning of Hydroid, dealing sufficient damage to clear larger hordes and making sure you have the energy efficiency needed, should you find yourself in a pinch and need to use Tentacle Swarm while in Undertow for example. The intermediate build is fairly similarly set up, but with a lot of mods that are simply unobtainable in a normal way for newer players. You have less efficiency, way more duration, and your range and strength are well balanced. This build is also meant to serve as your farming build. You can pick and choose whatever mod you feel is not necessary and switch it out for Pilfering Swarm to gain that sweet sweet 100% extra loot drop. The advanced slash late game slash steel path build focuses around one thing and one thing only as much CC as possible. I subsumed Gloom onto Hydroid, replacing Tidal Wave. Big surprise, I know. While the added mobility of Tidal Wave is nice, it doesn't do very much otherwise. We can cleanse ourselves of status with Rolling Guard, or even sit out the duration in Operator Mode, so I found no use for the augment either. Therefore, Gloom slows down enemies, making sure we can softlock the large hordes of enemies that you will encounter in Steel Path with Tempest Barrage while you keep your back cleared with Tentacle Swarm. It's a very on the edge build. You misstep, you die. You run out of energy, you die, but that's where Undertow kicks in. It's an added oh shit button, should you ever need it. So like I said, it's fairly straightforward and the gameplay doesn't really change that much from beginner to intermediate playstyles. The only real change happens when you play high level content because you actually need to watch your ass and not die. So beginner to intermediate, you want to be the lockdown monster of Loch Ness. Casting your puddle, releasing the Kraken, and then start killing everything that the Kraken touches. It's fairly simple really, but it's necessary to repeat this. <laughs> Cast Tentacle Swarm while in Undertow. You want more damage, this gives you more damage. Furthermore, all enemies in your vicinity will be knocked down anyway, so you don't take a lot of damage during those long ass casts. You want to do this in areas where a lot of enemies come from. So you 1. Get more loot, and 2. Make sure your teammates stay alive. The high level content playstyles are different for everyone. Personally, I found the combo of Tempest Barrage with Gloom fairly fun to play, since you're able to move a lot more freely. 
With this playstyle, your fourth ability is still focused on loot and locking down an area. However, you want to do that without you goofing around there and making enemies slow as shit. You want your teammates to clean up the mess your tentacles make, while you deal with the large amounts of slow enemies that get knocked on their ass by Tempest Barrage. You still have your Puddle of Doom to take a breather and to maximize damage on your fourth ability, so there really shouldn't be a reason for you to die, other than when you actually take damage because you're out of energy or because you forgot to cast your abilities. It's on the edge, it's dynamic, and in my opinion, a lot of fun. Do note that I don't think these builds are the most effective builds out there, but they get the job done and support a playstyle I enjoy, so feel free to play around with them and adjust them to your liking. And there you go. Thanks Emma for voting for this absolute horrific piece of chaos that I had to write a script for. Plan it out and edit everything in Premiere Pro just out of spite. May the tentacles be forever in your favor. Don't forget to like the video, make sure you subscribe for more videos like this, but also more guides, discussion videos, builds and other random shenanigans. Until then, stay safe out there Tenno, later.